Hi folks! As a historical geographer, I believe that most of the features we see today on the natural and cultural landscapes are products of past events caused by humans and or nature. In cases like the Dust Bowl, for example, a combination of natural conditions and human activities caused the disaster. Here on the vantage point, we call that perspective bridging time and place. You know, history has many interesting facts about natural climate change. To get us started, let's look at the top five natural factors that affect weather and climate. Number five, it's hot and sticky. That's right, humidity is a greenhouse gas too, not just CO2, carbon dioxide. Number four, the Earth's tilt. The angle of the Earth's tilt has a tremendous impact on the seasons, weather, and climate. There's no guarantee that the Earth's tilt will remain at 23 and a half degrees. Number three, clear, clean skies. When they occur over tropical oceans, they invite global warming. That's because high solar angles over the tropics, absent cloud cover, which reflects energy back into space, heats up ocean currents like the Gulf Stream. Those currents carry excess heat into zones of energy deficit. That's above or below 40 degrees north and south latitude. Number two, natural cooling. Ice, snow, and cloud cover reflect energy back into space. They have high albedo ratings. So, they have a cooling effect. And number one, nature is attracted to ice ages. If left to its own devices, nature will store carbon away in chalk beds, limestone rock, coal, petroleum, and peat. It also stores away water in sandstone aquifers and glaciers. By removing those greenhouse gases from circulation, their impact on global cooling is increased. Today on the Vantage Point, I want to share with you a story that I call Masada, a history of natural climate change. I hope you'll join me. Paleoclimatological or old climates evidence and historical records from the Near East and elsewhere point to a deep reservoir of climate information which suggests that arid conditions around the Dead Sea, which during the Biblical era was known as the Salt Sea or the Eastern Sea, have alternated with wetter periods throughout the last 9,000 years. During what was a wetter epoch or time period, King Herod of Judea built a fortress called Masada. Nowadays, the high bone-dry plateau is located in Israel overlooking the Dead Sea from the eastern edge of the Judean Desert. During Herod's time, climbing to the top of the plateau, or Mesa, was not easy, so the king thought that the high-level land would make an excellent haven during armed revolts. Masada also offered a tremendous view of the blue waters of the Eastern Sea, which would have contained more water and less saline than it does today, probably had fish in it then. Herod and his would-be defenders built storehouses for food and cisterns to collect rainwater. The king's refuge even boasted a bathhouse. As it turned out, Herod never used Masada for its original purpose, but as many as 960 Jews took shelter there after the Romans sacked Jerusalem in 70 AD. While there is some debate among archaeologists about how large a community took refuge on Masada, it must have been big enough to be a concern for the provincial Roman government. The rebels were pursued and besieged by a determined Roman legion for over a year. The Romans who had occupied Masada earlier and saw it as a strategically important place invested millions of man hours building a causeway to reach the rebel sanctuary on the top. When the Romans reached the palaces, they discovered that the rebels had committed mass suicide. However, the number of holdouts on Masada is a debated topic. Kenneth Atkinson, for example, argues that there is no physical evidence that a large number of people killed themselves on Masada. The remains of only 28 people were found in a cave. However, the Romans could have removed the dead so they could once again reclaim and occupy the buildings and grounds. Clearly, they saw great value in occupying Masada. It makes little sense that the Romans would have allowed the lofty perch to remain a graveyard. As a place of refuge for frightened Jews, the regional climate must have been much wetter during the Roman warm period. 
Indeed, studies show that such was the case. According to Michael McCormick and his colleagues, Lake Van Isotopes, that's the largest lake in Turkey, indicate a shift away from higher aridity or dry conditions around 150 BC. Minerals found in a Turkish cave show relative stability from around 100 BC to about 250 AD. Isotope values and archaeological wood found in the Roman siege ramp at Masada also suggest wetter conditions around the Dead Sea in the 1st century AD. Nowadays, Masada has a high evaporation rate and only 2 inches or 5.8 centimeters of rain per year. There's little chance that even a handful of rebels could be sustained for a week on today's Masada. In the early to middle 70s AD, the lofty plateau, Mesa, supported anywhere from 28 to 960 people for a year without supplies or water being shipped in from family and friends. Masada's example shows how climate can change the way people are able to occupy and use space. The story of Masada is one of long-term and often abrupt climate changes that were taking place way before the Industrial Revolution. This is not to say that humans do not impact weather and climate today. Nature's move toward colder climates is caused by storing greenhouse gases, changes in the Earth's tilt, changes in solar output, and volcanic activity. Cloud cover and glaciers too, because of their high albedo rating, reflect energy back into space. Humanity's activities may well be offsetting nature's march toward yet another ice age. I hope you got something out of this discussion and will like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week here on The Vantage Point.